All right, so today we're going to be replacing a lock on a outdoor electrical panel. Customer has no lock here. Um, so you need to know who makes the panel. Um, this one is made by Cutler. And then uh, you just go to websites. I did a search, I couldn't find it one, but uh, I asked some of my colleagues for websites or where to find this panel. And two people gave me some really good website links. Um, and I narrowed down all the Cutler panel locks. It was quite a few. And then I actually just saw that this had a diamond shaped pattern and I matched it up to the only lock that had the diamond shaped pattern and ordered that in. A little pricey, but uh, it's, I mean, the customer wants it locked and uh, it's a liability issue, so we're gonna put that in there. All right, so we're going to install it. I noticed there's this uh, cutout at the bottom of the panel and there's a corresponding notch when this is in the locked position. We'll just uh, assemble this. Pretty easy, just uh, put that there. Um, there's that other plate here that I believe goes over top of that and then the two screws. Let me pause this. All right, so we got the two screws and the plate installed. And this is a color hammer. I said color earlier, but it's color hammer panel. All right, and then uh, I don't know why we have all these other pieces. I'm not sure what this piece does. Or where it goes in relation to this. Maybe the, uh, actually it seems to me this piece would go on first because it needs to be driven by that square part. Um, and again, I don't know if the, uh, which direction I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll pause this and let you know. Alright, so I have determined that this is the wrong length. This is not ever going to engage the door. Um, as well, it looks like it used to be a three-point mechanism at one point. I could not find that on the website that I went to. Websites, plural, that I went to. Um, so at this point, I am going to have to fabricate a tailpiece. The lock part looks great. It's a great fit. It's a great start. But yeah, I'm going to have to fabricate out of a piece of metal here to get something to work. I did some digging around in my truck for some scrap metal that might work. Um, the only thing I see right away is probably this piece. It's got uh, decent thickness. It's not as thick but uh, it should work and uh, I could probably use this square piece as a starting point and cut this all the way to the end here I think that'll have enough catch or maybe I'll use it like cut it like this here try to get a little longer and then uh, Cut that out, form it, put the smith back into locksmith, you know what I mean, for the scratch tool. And traced the pattern of the existing piece. I have to cut a little more into the square, and I traced the exact length, so I'm going to make it quite a bit longer. So let's cut this. I'm not going to touch it. Um, the hardest part is going to be getting that inside square piece 
profiled to the proper dimension. I'm already thinking of how I'm going to accomplish that. We'll figure it out. So I'm thinking of doing is trying my hand at Dremel. I've got one of my smaller wheels on. If I had a full size wheel, this wouldn't be as easy to do. Just going to do my best to trim it out by hand and then maybe find a file that fits in there at the end of it. I don't think I have a file that fits in there, but we'll come to that when we come to that. Just do this part for now. Now my tool has worn down to the point where it almost fits inside the square part. It's great. I love these tiny pieces. Uh, I keep them because of situations like this. So we're going to use that for advantage and do our best to sheep this and get that fit. All right, so that fits in there. It's not beautiful, but it does not turn side to side. It's a snug fit. So I'm going to deburr the edges of this make that smooth and then uh, install that see where it sits and it's gonna have to be trimmed I cut it longer than I thought it needs to be on purpose so we'll hopefully that's still the situation it's about the right length oh. Okay, I did not know it turned that way as well. It's having difficulty. All right, it's uh, it works. I'm not 100% happy with it yet. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of spacing here to get it work properly, but it's it's we're on the right track here. My issue here is that this slot should be down at the bottom because this swings from the bottom up. Uh, this cabinet was built for one that swings from the top, kind of like this. However, there is a mechanism filed into the base of this lock that really prevents it. I managed to work away around the mechanism a couple times accidentally, but uh, I'm going to have to modify the base of the handle. Now there's another way I could go around this. I can pop on a strike plate here to extend this lip uh, by riveting it. However, there's a few issues with that. A, I have to drill into a live panel. I'm not keen on that. B, I'm not sure if that would void any kind of uh, compliance with electrical code. I'm not familiar with any electrical codes and outdoor panels. Uh, it could be a potential issue and I don't want to be responsible for replacing the entire panel here. Nope, I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna stick with the lock. It might take a little longer to do, but I know I'm not violating any kind of code by, by doing this. The panel is shaped and the way this end locking lug interacts, I have to keep this this way. Um, give me a minute. And then uh, there's no way the I can get the handle to turn. It's always want to turn down because of this lug here. What I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do is file this lug down on the top of the plug so that I can get full act full rotation top to bottom. It's not gonna be perfect and it's not gonna be proper, but. It's going to be the only solution on this lock, I think, at the moment. So let me file the lock, top one, make sure I don't file the bottom one. Back to you in a second. Seems to be grass cutting day. That's great. Love that. Anyways, um, so I, I filed the uh, top of the lug. The one that controls the uh, 90 degree rotation. I still have the bottom one because that's controlled the locking and that's essential to this project keep that uh, don't keep the top one now it rotates uh, 360 degrees any direction which is better than it was it's not perfect maybe I got the wrong lock maybe I got the only lock available I don't know but 
at least it still locks into the lug when you when you prevent people kids from opening the cabinet or whatever and then uh, you can open the top let's try this let's see if this works better I'm not sure if there's some sort of spacer that's supposed to go in between here uh, but if I tighten that too far that is definitely not going to turn I'm going to leave that a little loose uh, maybe some Loctite would be a good idea uh, but yes now it rotates up the way it should and when it's in the closed position you can still lock that perfect let's try this out Perfect handle is in the right spot. Lock it. We need to unlock it. So this seems to be about the right length. I thought I cut it too long, but it might even be too short to be honest. But uh, it's very adequate. It looks like it's catching by about three eighths of an inch. So it's uh, seems to be fine. That's what the customer wanted. Locking cabinet with two keys. Perfect. So I, uh, I'm a locksmith by trade. Um, I've got some cool videos on my channel if you want to check out on other things. Not necessarily locksmith, I, hardly any locksmith stuff at this point. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Comment anything below about this. Um, share this video and I've got a little Amazon wish list if you want to buy me some stuff from it I would be pretty cool I would appreciate it I will give you a little shout out thanks for watching I got other cool stuff to watch so stay tuned thank you